This is a brand new 191 square metre two storey building we completed as part of a two lot subdivision. Coming up, we'll show you a time lapse of the build, we'll take a look at the floor plan, and we'll review the plans in detail, talking about how we tackled some of the tricky parts of the build. Stick around to the end of the video to see the entire finished home. Before the guys get to work on site, we needed a set of consented plans. Here you can see the original plan, and here you can see the proposed lot too. This plan was made possible by removing this small part of the existing building. You can see here the boundary is not quite straight and has been made to move around the existing building. This means that both lots have the appropriate site area and coverage that tick all the boxes to get a subdivision approved. This was a backyard and it had a garage and studio there that needed to be demolished. Here you can see in Earthworks plan, all the areas in red are what needs to get scraped away removing approximately 35 cubic meters of soil and cutting it to one flat height. Then the boys got stuck into foundations and you can see a concrete slab plan here it was 116 square metre concrete slab, but as well as that we had to drill and fill approximately 50 holes down about 2 metres. If it's any further away than 600 mils below the surface, we have to involve an engineer, and the engineer has to design a system to transfer the load down to good ground. We usually do this with piles that we can either do drilled and filled like we did on this job here, or the other common approach is we use driven piles. So typically we'll drill a hole 300 to 450 wide depending what the engineer expect and then we'll put some steel in the middle of the hole. We've bent up these cages here and they have four D12 rods and we've made up rings to hold the rods in place and then they get pumped full of concrete. We then sand the area and we carry on with a slab as per normal. These polystyrene pods are 1.1 meters squared and they are 200 mils thick. As well as being an insulating product, they also mean that we reduce the volume of concrete we need. Once we've put our boxing in place, it's really easy to put that all together. And you can see the layout of that on the engineering plans here. We also put a fence up at the same time. This split off the new house from the old house. It clearly defines each area and keeps everyone safe. So once the slab's laid, we get to work standing frames. We stand the lower level frames. Once the frames start shooting up, you really get a sense of the floor plan. Here we can see the lower level, you come in the entranceway and on the right hand side we have stairs to the upper level. Moving into the left we have a large open plan living with the kitchen on the back wall, a media room in the back corner. A nice large double garage over here and a bathroom on the lower level. Moving upstairs we have a compact design that still fits in four bedrooms. We have three kids bedrooms, all the same size, all with a double wardrobe and we have a main bathroom. And over here in the northern corner of the build, we have a walk-in wardrobe, ensuite, and bedroom. A nice storage cupboard upstairs as well.
From here, we carry on with the mid floor framing. As well as having a foundation plan, we have a mid floor plan. This build here had eight ECD beams. ECD stands for Special Engineer Design. Basically, wherever there's a large opening or a large span downstairs, but there's a floor upstairs, we need a big large beam. For example, here, there's a 6.8 meter beam going across the middle of the garage. That line there is the upper external wall, and that beam sends all of the load of that upstairs all the way to the edges of the building. But on this side here, where this beam finishes, it lands above a garage door. So then we needed to use beam eight to send beam seven's load to either side of the garage. That all gets worked out by an engineer. Those are all big grunty beams. Some of them are steel, some of them are timber. And it's then our job to make sure that they get installed on site as per the engineer design. I think there's a thing of me doing a pull up on that one. You can also see in here, we used 290 by 45 mil SG8 floor joists. That would also be code for 12 by two if you're using the Imperial system. And we put them at 400 centers. In here, it's noting that the max span we're allowed for those beams is 5.1 meters. Over on this side, we had the beams at 600 centers because we're spanning them over a, a four meter distance, not a five meter distance. This all gets worked out by the engineer and the designer, and we just follow the rules. Once we've got the mid floor down, we put the scaffold up and we get the upper level frames up. From here, we then do the roof trusses and the roof goes on. It is a typical corrugated iron roof. We have to do these lower level sections of the roof here before we can put scaffold on and move on with doing the upper level here. And we've also got a skylight in the bottom left corner of the roof here. As well as raising the roof, you can help us raise our subscriber count. Go ahead, click subscribe. The building was clad with a combination of Hardy's linear and linear oblique. The linear oblique ran vertical and was a skinny wide pattern. And the Hardy's weatherboard gives it a traditional look which ties in with the area. Nice big large sliding doors here off to an outdoor area. Once the house has its paper, its windows, its flashing, and its cladding, we now call it closed in. The painters can work on the outside while the boys move inside and they do insulation. We get it pre-wired, pre-plumbed, and then we put on the plasterboard lining. Once the plasterboard lining, commonly known as jib here in New Zealand, is on the walls, we get the plasterer in and the builders can now come back inside and move on to the finishing stage of the build. This involves putting the internal doors in, girdings and architraves up, and then the painter can come back and finish the inside. Now we're ready to do things like kitchen, flooring, bathroom fittings and fixtures. It's truly becoming a home. Now let's take a look at the finished build. Yo, remember when I was standing over there and we were watching the digger over there demolish the old garage. That was February and now it's December and not only have we done a subdivision, we've chopped off the backyard, but we've built a house. It's got code of compliance. New owners are moving in this weekend. Happy days.